we pushed through our initial testing and you even saw our robot jog a little bit, but I brought in Chris Elston with YRG to take us through the steps of setting this up. How do we get started on this? Well, the first thing we gotta do, Tim, is actually connect to the controller. Okay. That's probably a good start. Okay. So we're gonna be using our software called RCX Studio. Mm -hmm. um, would be the best way to do it. And we're gonna connect to it with uh, ethernet connection. Tell me a little more about RCX Studio. Uh, so RCX Studio is a is a software tool that you can program the robot with and you go to wiregeinc.com and we have two versions of software, a free version and a paid version that you can use. And that's the configuration tool that we're gonna be using. All right, let's check it out. Okay. All right, so Tim already downloaded the uh, RCX Studio software uh, 2020, which is actually the paid version of uh, the configuration software. Um, and the first thing that we want to do is connect to the robot. Okay, what's its default IP address? The default IP address is 192.168.0.2. Okay. So okay. In, in order to get our laptop to actually talk to that IP address, we have to set it to the same subnet. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so how we do that in a, in a Windows 10 machine is we go down here to, uh, you know, the network icon is how I do it. Um, I click on networks and internet settings, and then I click on Ethernet, and then I find the appropriate Ethernet adapter. Um, and in this case, you only have one on this laptop. So we're going to go do change adapter setting options and right click and go to properties. And we're going to go to IP4 and go to properties here. And in this case, we've already, looks like we've already kind of pre-set up our, our subnet. Yeah. Uh, so our, our laptop needs to match the same subnet as the default, which the most important part is 192.168.0 and the lap and the laptop's IP address is 103. Okay. And if all that he just said was way too much, you're like, whoa, I don't even know anything about it. We have a playlist at the end of this video series that includes how to configure your IP address and how to understand those numbers. But according to Tim's networking rules, the most important thing is the first three numbers have to be the same. And more importantly, that fourth one needs to be unique. Okay, so now that we've confirmed um, what we want our laptop to be, which like Tim said, needs to be different than our robot. In this case, 103 is our laptop. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and accept that, hit close, and we can even take one step farther here. We've got our cable already connected through the switch. We can do a command prompt here and just double check to see if we can ping the robot. So we'll go ahead and run a ping command, ping 192.168.0, and the robot's default IP address is a .2. So once we hit enter there, we see that we have a response. That's a really good sign that we can go ahead and try to connect with the RCX Studio software. So here we are back at the RCX Studio software. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do um, a new project here, would be the best thing to do. And you can decide where you want to, to put it. I'll just leave the default there. And we get this connection panel because we're allowed to connect to multiple robots. That's what the purpose of this is is we could have like one and many robots, but in this case, we'll go ahead and just do a new controller connection. We'll double click that. And what we're doing is since we actually have the physical robot here, we want to just upload the robot data from uh, how it was shipped to us from Yamaha. So we're gonna be doing an online mode and we're gonna get the information from the robot over ethernet IP is what we're gonna, or I'm sorry, ethernet. And we're gonna click next here. And then you'll notice that it automatically puts in the default IP address and the default port number. Um, you should really not change the port number. Uh, 23 should be uh, acceptable for that. And then there's our default IP address. So we'll click next here. So we're gonna hit uh, finish here and it's going to start in online mode, okay? Because we're using the paid version that we can actually do an offline mode and do emulation without wow. the robot here. Right. Or since we have the robot already, we're going to go ahead and co connect to it online mode, which is means the physical robot. All right, we're going to have to play with the emulation later then. So we'll click say OK. We've got our um, license installed or a dongle, so it'll go ahead and connect in online mode. You don't need the dongle if you're connecting offline. You can actually do all of your development and everything without the license before your robot arrives. You no, know, that's really nice. Uh, it takes a minute here to, to connect, um, and so this is... Uh, the default view of the RCX Studio software, you can see that we've uh, we've got some values yeah. of the robot. So they already live. Yeah, well, you know, it's everything. So 
All right. Well, what do we need to do next? Well, first of all, I, that's not the IP address I want this at. How do I change it? Where that is at in the software is it's up here in uh, under the system tab. Hmm. And we're going to go to communication setting. And what's the IP address you'd like in the lab here, Tim? I would really have that right here ready for you. Just hold on. I think it was 192.168.1.61, was it not? <laughs> That's what I remember. No, no, you're pretty good at this. <laughs> okay, let's put that in then. <laughs> okay. And then, you know, uh, I also have to change the gateway subnet because I just learned your three rules. Your yeah, three that's rule. That's, and our gateway is actually, and you won't need a gateway for your application, but yeah. we are going to do some really cool stuff with this. So we're going to make it 192.168.1.1. Okay, very good. And also, I'd like to point out that you can connect to the robot controller with our serial cable too. Yeah. You could do, you could change the IP address through a serial cable, through just the IP method, or actually a teach pendant. No. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and do the, uh, we'll do this here. I'll say okay. And when we do that, we're going to lose connection. Okay. To the, uh, to the robot controller, right? right? So, and then guess what we got to do? We got to go change our IP address. That's right. That's what we got to do. So we're going to go ahead and let that. Change, um, and then we're going to close down our software and basic, and now uh, reset our PC. So we're going to go back to um, the way that I do it. There's probably a shorter way. You could probably type in a shortcut way, I'm sure. Well, yeah, and I just I just learned about this uh, at Josh Vargas's uh, traceroute.com, and yeah, we're doing some videos on it also. Oh yeah, yeah. So. All right, so I assume we're going to just change this to dot one here on it. That's correct. Is that correct? All right. So we'll go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll say OK and close, and close this, and close that, and then we're going to use good old DOS command prompt again and verify that we uh, changed our IP address. So we'll do a ping 192.168.0.1.61, and hey, looky there. We're talking. We're talking to our robot controller, right? So we'll hit exit. And then now this setting here, we could reuse it if we want, or we could blow it away. Okay. If we so want to we change, change that, it? yeah, we can actually change that. If we just highlight it and go uh -huh. down here and we update it to the lab's IP address scheme, right? Okay. So we change it to 192.160 or the 61 there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then now um, we can uh, highlight this. And uh, if you want to do it online mode, it's a little trickery here. We have to just highlight it and click the online button. Okay. If we do a double click here, it's going to want to start in offline mode, and that's not what we want. But I think so, I need to play with that later. Yeah. So uh, we'll go ahead and cancel that, and we'll just highlight this and click online mode with the new IP address. And uh, we'll go ahead and start online mode, and it should try to reattempt to connect to the robot controller with the new IP address. Okay. So we've got, we should be connected to the uh, robot controller for, uh, with factory default. Mm -hmm. So you have a YK500 XGL robot. Right. Um, and these are parameters um, as is. Uh, when you order a robot, Yamaha sets the controller up with default parameters, payloads, uh, the default IP address, which we just now changed. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, it was also ordered with Ethernet IP so that yeah. we could communicate with uh, Alan Bradley or any other PLC that uses Ethernet IP. Okay. So uh, we probably want to do, uh, you know, we, we what I recommend is actually starting the robot up without um, enabling the Ethernet IP. Okay. Uh, because once we enable that card, then we're forced to set all of the bits and e-stop bits and all okay. of that. So if we kind of hold off on not setting up Ethernet IP and just leave that card turned off, Okay. Uh, we can actually turn the servos on, origin it, jog the robot, make sure those things uh, work without um, the PLC being involved at this point. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So um, the uh, obviously the first thing we got to do is we got to make sure that we've met our hardware e-stops um, on the controller. And I don't know, do we want to take a look at the front there, Tim, and see, or do you actually have it all wired up already? It's actually already wired up, and we see down here it is asking for... Us to reset our e-stop, so I'm gonna walk over here. Okay. Hit our reset. Right. Right. So you got all the wiring all done. The yes. hands, so the emergency stop hardwire uh, circuit is okay now. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and reset the alarm. Okay, so we've already uh, turned on our servos, and the next step is to origin all of our accesses on uh, 
our robot. Okay. Good. So out of the box, normally the the robot is hasn't been origin. It needs to be origin for the first time when you take it out of the box. And when you say origin, what exactly are you doing? Is that for like homing the robot? Is that what? That yeah. Means? So it's just uh, it's the same thing as homing like a regular servo motor. So I knew. When you first power up a servo motor, it needs to like go to either a torque or a, a sensor home, and that establishes a zero position. Or actually, in the in the in the motor world, it's it pulses. Okay. okay. So this Scara is a four-axis uh, robot. That means it has four servo motors on it. Okay. So originating A1, A2, A3, A4, those are the four axes that we need to origin. And on this robot, it has. Three sensors that it orders to, and one axis is a torque origin. Okay. That's the actual Z axis. So in Yamaha's world, we have three choices of how we origin a robot. We can either origin to torque, uh, we can order the sensor, or we can just origin in what I call La La Land, which means make a jig for it and origin it anywhere you want and call that zero. Okay. Well, I've been in a lot of applications. That may be necessary, though. Yeah. So, um, but one of the things we need to understand about origining the robot for the very first time out of the box is that the motors actually rotate um, uh, counterclockwise, okay? Right. So what we, what, what we have here is we got, this is A1, or what's considered the x-axis on the robot. Okay. It's going to want, this arm and motor is going to want to turn in this direction. Okay. And if we look at the back, there's a sensor back here. And and we're and what it's doing is it's telling it to go until I see the sensor is off. Okay. All right. And then it'll do a little jig move there, mm -hmm. and then it'll reset that arm position or axis to zero. Okay. And then the next thing it'll do is it will um, bring the Y over in the same direction, in a counterclockwise direction. Okay. And it'll find the sensor, which is actually under here. There's a flag mm -hmm. under here as well for that one. Okay. And then it'll do the same thing for the R axis. There's a flag. Uh, we can kind of rotate this around here. There's the flag and there's the sensor. And it's also going to be rotating towards the counterclockwise direction as well. So what we don't want to do on a Yamaha robot is this axis be past that sensor. Okay. Because this is the first time it's trying to figure out where it is. Mm -hmm. And so what would happen is if it's past this point of center, it's going to keep going on around this direction until what does it do? It's going to run in dark. It's going to run into our... Right. So when we initially do the uh, origin, uh, we want to make sure that this arm is kind of uh, what would be considered left of center. Mm -hmm. And this is left of center as well. Okay. And then uh, we could go ahead and make sure that this is all this flag is also left of center of the uh, boss. Right. Exactly whatever you have attached here, make sure it can't twist. Yeah, because it doesn't know where it's at, right? So we don't want to wind up the arrows or our wires. And then the last one is just torque origin on this. Okay. All right. So it doesn't damage it to go off like that? Right? No. Okay. No, it just goes and bottoms out. And matter of fact, most of the single axis actuators, like your little SSO4 that you have on your trainer, mm -hmm. is a torque based origin. Okay. Like right. curtain reset. Okay. And we will reset the, uh, the alarm here. And we'll go ahead and hit perform. It's here. Hit the Z axis first. And you can actually choose. Which axis is first? Oh. Out of the box, the Z axis is, it raises the tool up, and then the second one to do. And the second axis is the X axis, and then the third axis it does is the Y. Okay. And the very last axis will be the R motor. Okay. And again, you can choose the order of origin on it, wow. um, or you can individually origin each one if you want. But if you choose to do everything, there's an origin order that you can choose. Um, but the default is what we what we saw. All right, what's next? Okay, so we just ordered the robot, but now ordering the robot doesn't mean anything to us as far as programming. We need to understand a standard coordinate of a robot. Okay. And so that's really the magic sauce of any robot. A standard coordinate system is the kinematics of the robot that takes the pulse values of the motor mm -hmm. and converts them into like a mathematical numbering system, X, Y, Z, R. Um, and that's how we get a coordinate system. All right, speaking of X, Y, Z, I really struggled to understand directions of this coordinate system. So if you Google a CNC coordinate system, you're going to get this. So X or X, Y, this way is positive, this way is positive. But this isn't how the robot sees it. Chris, where is the zero point on this robot? 
Yeah, so the standard coordinate on this robot, the zero, zero origin, is back here in the middle. So zero, zero X is in the very back, which means that the coordinate system is actually like this. Now, so you don't have to read this upside down. And so I didn't have to. I made you this diagram. And if we lay it down this way. So now, um, yeah, so we can pretty much just use this as um, this intersection right here would be 0, 0, 0, x, and 0, y. And, as, and, and why is this important? It's important to understand when we jog a robot. If we jog it in the x positive direction, the tool should come this away. If we jog it y positive, it should go this away, and x minus should go that away. Now, one thing that we can't really show on a piece of paper here is the z direction. In this case, the z direction is inverted, Z positive is towards the table, and Z negative is up. And then we also have um, the R axis on here to the rotation of this, um, uh, as far as the, the jogging of it. And now that we have that is all clear, we should be able to jog, be ready to jog the robot and understand direction. Now, if somebody needs a different coordinate system, if they like have the middle brain block I did or something, can we change that? You sure can. Yamaha gives you the option to change this direction however you want. Some people like it this way. And that's where I was this way. Now we're going to leave it at the standard, and I am going to learn to do this the right way. Show me how to jog this thing. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we reset the e-stop, we reset our error, and we've got to turn our motors back on. Uh, so we have an e-stop, we went to the light curtain. And we're done with the origin panel, so we can close that. Now, um, now we're over here on the jog panel. Now, one thing that I want to point out is you can control the motors in what's called pulse mode. So, so pulse mode means that we're just individually controlling the axes on here. All right, so we're going to individually jog the motors. 20% um, speed is okay, and, and we'll go ahead and do an A, A1. We're individually controlling just only that motor, and notice the other motors are basically dead. It's just carrying uh, the, the Y motor, the arm, and the Z axis around. You can see that we have, now we're just going to jog the Y motor, which is the secondary arm, and you see that the back motor did not move. So we, this is what it means to jog a motor in pulse mode, or another term is called joint jog. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a Z positive. Remember we said that the Z uh, is towards the table positive. And the Z minus is up away. And then we also have the A motor uh, jogging it. A minus is clockwise and positive is counterclockwise on this. Okay. Okay. So now let's take a look at enabling the coordinate system, which um, makes more sense to everyone. So we're going to select MM and notice that our jog panel turns into X, Y, Z, and R now, which matches our coordinate system. And let's jog the robot in tool mode now. And so what this does is it, we're really just now looking at just the, the robot's TCP or tool center point is what that stands for. So in this case, right where those brushes are on the robot, that's the center of the jogging point. And what this, this type of a jog mode does is it keeps that tool straight. It jogs it in a very linear fashion. So when we press the X positive, you can see that both the X and the Y motor are working together. The R motor is staying stationary and the tool stays in that orientation. So it technically, it's jogging a straight, perfect X jog when we press the X and X minus and X plus. And if we do the Y minus and Y plus, you can see that all the motors work together to keep that tooling nice and straight. And that's just makes for an easy, um, Easy job in teaching the robot and uh, basically doing our robot application now. Not staying. What do we need to do next? Well, really, we're ready to start programming, but we also want to set up the payload on a Yamaha robot. It's the most important, one of the most important things to do. Now, I want to break this payload out into its own video because even on our linear motion control option on our PLC trainers, you ask all the time, well, how do you select your motor? How do you select your gearbox? How do you figure all these things out? And I really think this is one of the best features of YRG setup is you don't. You really tell them your application 
and they do all the work for you. So we've created this playlist right here on how to select your payload, how to get your ethernet IP going, and click here to follow us over there.